although the somatic mutations leading to secondary resistance to first and second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors within the EJFR space are clearly understood to happen on a tissue base, tissue diagnostic can be quite complicated in certain settings complicated by the tissue acquisition itself because many patients do progress in difficult to access areas of the body like the bone. And then also the processing can be rather challenging in the pre as well as post fixation setting. Artifacts can occur um, by virtue of tissue preparation as well as conservation of the specimen. And in addition to this, um, those procedures can be quite uncomfortable at times to the patient. Right. I agree with that completely. And some of the patients are not so uh, eager to do another biopsy. And as you mentioned, it's not always easy. It's associated with some discomfort, uh, some risk, usually not severe risk, but some risk. And so it's not always easy to get that. And even though you do get a biopsy or attempt to get a biopsy, you don't always get an adequate specimen and able to do the, um, the mutational analysis. So, this is the advantage of a liquid biopsy where you can obtain blood basically on everybody and be able to do the genomic analyses on the circulating DNA. The only concern there is if somebody has a relatively small tumor burden, there may not be enough circulating DNA to identify it. But in patients who have a significant amount of tumor bulk, most of the time you will find DNA and you can enough DNA to analyze it. We've had here recently, and this is uh, since the third generation became approved, we've had six patients who are found to be T790M in the circulating DNA. And interestingly enough, although it's traditionally felt that the glomerular filter cannot negotiate molecular sizes beyond 50 kilodalton, we have recently identified sizable DNA fragments between 180 and 360 base pairs. Um, that allow us to pursue those molecular diagnostics, not only in the serum, but also in the urine. I think that'll be particularly useful, probably in patients who have a low tumor burden, because maybe it'll be more concentrated in the urine and you'll be able to do the analyses. The other advantage of doing what we call the liquid biopsies, so let's say we have a six centimeter tumor in the lung and we put a needle in there, even get a couple cores. We know that those tumors are heterogeneous you might not, there might be a T790 mutation, you might not find it with the areas that you hit. The, the blood that is circulating DNA in the serum is more likely to give you a more global picture of what's going on in that tumor and might detect uh, T790M mutations in the serum when you might not detect it with a biopsy of a mass. That is a very interesting and important aspect of this type of diagnostics, as we know that for a priori primary driver mutations, there are subsets detected within primary tumors where a certain molecular heterogeneity is identified. Those can be up to 40%. Right. 